It is a new era for DePaul basketball. The Tony Stubblefield era is underway, and we are pleased to be joined by the 15th head coach in Blue Demons history now. Tony, great to have you with us. What has led you to DePaul basketball? Well, first of all, let me say thank you very much. I'm very excited. I'm happy to be here, and I'm really looking forward to this opportunity. Um, growing up in Iowa, I was very aware of the tradition and the history of DePaul, DePaul basketball, and the success they had had in the past. All the great players that had come through here, the city of Chicago, the great education you can get at DePaul. So them are some of the things that really led me to DePaul and the uh, reason why I recruited DePaul. When everything came down uh, with this situation, you're in the process with your Oregon Ducks of completing a, a great win over Iowa and on an NCAA tournament run. I'm curious here if you could take us a little bit behind the scenes. When did you think, Tony, hey, maybe DePaul could be the job for me? How did that come about? What well, came about, you know, we had exchanged some text messages prior to going into the bubble. Um, once in the bubble, I did have an opportunity to do a Zoom with them after our, our win against Iowa. So we, I felt like we had a good conversation at that point in time. But at the same time, I knew they would be interviewing candidates. And um, we were still in that bubble. And again, I wanted to win. We were in there. We had been there two weeks. So we had to stay there three weeks to win it all. We were committed, and I was committed to doing that. But unfortunately, we got beat by USC on a Sunday evening, um, made our way back to Eugene, Oregon. And I was fortunate enough where I got a phone call um, from Glenn, who was running the search firm, said they had an interest and I needed to get back on a plane and head back to the Midwest to Chicago. So it was about 10 hours on the plane that day, but it was very well worked those 10 hours. And um, obviously things have worked out and I'm excited to be the next head coach at DePaul. So again, you know, it was a lot that had transpired over the course of the two weeks. And again, being in that bubble where, you know, we, we were kind of secluded there while we were playing. And then unfortunately we did get beaten once we got out of it, they did reach back out to meet me in person. Tony, DePaul has history, winning history. But this program has not been to the NCAA tournament since 2004. What needs to be the start of getting this program back to relevance? Well, you know, let me say this. You got to work tirelessly and you got to recruit extremely hard. And you got to get kids that are committed to turning the program around. You know, I've been in two situations where they have been rebuilt situations. Been at the University of Cincinnati in 2006, where we made the transition to the Big East, and then going to Oregon in um, 2010, when the Pac-12 had finished at the bottom of the Pac-12. So I've been a part of rebuilding situations. Um, we got to get the talent in here that can help us rebuild it. We do have some talent in place here, and we've got to add to that. And we've got to get young men whose visions align with mine of going out there, playing it hard, and leaving it all on the floor. Obviously, the Big East is a very, very competitive league. There's great coaches. There's great coaches, uh, players in the Big East. So I do know it's a major challenge. I know I got myself into, but I will work tirelessly to bring DePaul basketball back. It's interesting. I got a chance to talk with New Marquette head coach. You'll now have a rivalry with – the Golden Eagles as DePaul and Marquette go way back. Shaka Smart, and he shared some surprising Big East ties. It's a small world, this, this college basketball world. What Big East ties do you have to maybe one of those coaches or, or somebody that comes to mind? And you do have the, the Cincinnati linkage as well. Anybody in the conference now that, that you're really close with or that resonates? No, you know, I wouldn't stand straight. I'm, I'm really, really close with anybody as far as coaches. But, you know, we've played teams in the Big East. We've played Seton Hall this past year. We happened to play them um, two years ago in the Battle of Atlantis. So we've all, you know, on a regular basis, we've played teams out of the Big East Conference. Obviously, Coach Altman coached at Creighton University prior to them going to Big East, but just getting to know their athletic director there. So, you know, as far as getting to know the coaches and um, knowing any coach really, really well in the Big East, I can't say that. But we've played quite a few of the teams in the Big East over my time at Cincinnati. What kind of a style do you want your team to play? You know, I want to be able to get up and down. You know, I, I really do. I really want to try to score in transition. Um, if we're not able to get a basket in transition, I want us to make the extra pass. And, and instead of getting a good shot, I want to get a great shot. I want to play the right way 
and share, really share the ball. Defensively, I really want to get after, put pressure on people, take passes away, and be able to generate some offense off of our defense as far as getting the deflections and just being disruptive. You know, I want to be able to switch up defenses to go to a zone, um, be able to three-quarter court press back to a two-three zone, be able to throw some um, full-court press in there. So I want to play a hard, exciting, random basketball, but again, tough, hard nose at the same time where you're really going to have to defend and rebound, and I know there's going to be some tough, hard nose games in the Big East. Tony, with the, the challenges ahead, your AD, Dwayne Peavy, said, look, we're not going to lower any standards. The, the, the standard, the expectation – at DePaul is continuing to be championships. We're in a world right now where there's over 1,200 transfers in the portal. The, the state of college basketball, there's a lot of players moving from program to program. How much do you kind of balance that idea of, yes, you want to bring in talent, but you also want to bring in the kids that you know can take on the challenge ahead specifically for your program? Well, again, the standard is the standard, and we're here to win at DePaul, you know, right now. So, again, you know, with the transfer portal and the way it has been, um, it's a matter of the fit, and that's kind of the way we've looked at it and the way I've recruited the portal. We've had successful transfers at Oregon. I do look, believe in looking in the transfer portal at here, but, again, it's got to be the fit, right fit whose common goals and visions align with what we're trying to get done at DePaul University. So all the pieces have got to fit into place. And if it's not the transfer portal, it could be high school kids that are still available or high school young men that have gotten out of their letter of intent where, you know, they previously signed at a prior institution where there might have been a coaching change. So there's a lot of different ways to get it done, international guys. But again, the transfer portal is an area we'll look in. But at the same time, the guys that are coming to the program that we want to be a part of it, it's got to be the right fit for what we're looking for and what they're looking for. What distinguishes a Tony Stubblefield-led program from any other program? You know, I think the energy and the passion that I bring, it's just, it's just who I am as a person. I'm just being natural with who I am and just the relationship that I'm going to have with these young men. And again, it's more about just basketball with me. I want these young men to be successful in life. And I tell our guys all the time, it's a four-year commitment to me, but you know, you're stuck with me for life. So again, it's, it's bigger than basketball. I want these young men to come to DePaul, have a great basketball experience, leave here with a degree, and go out and be successful young men. And I care very deeply about them and just building them relationships with them over the course of time. You know, Tony, a couple of years ago, now the year before last, this is a program that got off to a really good start to the season and ended up beating Texas Tech. There was a court storming. You could tell that the fan base, they were passionate. And that passion is there. You see it in glimpses. You saw it then. Why is this, this going to be different from the last 15 years that this fan base has been through? Why can this be different? Well, it's like you said, you know the fan base is there. You know there's passion. It's been proven before. So the difference is we just got to be do that and do it on a regular basis and be very consistent. And again, winning cures a lot. So again, we know what we're selling, um, a great city of Chicago, a great education at DePaul, and we know the opportunities that's here. And you have a great base starting in Chicago with Chicago kids going to the suburbs, to the state of Illinois. Everything is in place to be successful at DePaul University. All right, Tony, where's the first place you're heading in Chicago other than campus and, and running your program? Have you given any thought? To, to get some great food that the city of Chicago has to offer. I haven't figured out which restaurant, but there's many choices. You don't have to go far. Paisano's is right across the street from Wintrust Arena, literally across the way, one of a couple restaurants, and uh, I'm sure you'll find some good pizza. Might just be a tad better than Oregon pizza. Not to put down Oregon, but might just be a tad better, Tony. <laughs> I, got yeah, I appreciate the recommendation. <laughs> Tony Stubblefield, welcome to DePaul. Welcome to the Big East. Great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Look forward to meeting you.